Hello Interwebs, I'm Dave. And I'm Jacob. So if you want to start an illustrious streaming career, then you're likely to run into a particular app called the Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS for short. OBS Studio is a fantastic tool and very simple to use once you've been shown the ropes. So let's get into the basics. So first up, we're going to assume you've got OBS installed on your computer, but if not, go to OBS Project and download the software. Make sure to get OBS Studio and not simply OBS, as the latter is now deprecated and will not have all the useful features outlined within this video. So open the app and let's get started. Don't worry about what's going on on the main interface just yet, we'll get back to this very shortly. Head over to Settings in the bottom right or under File, select the Audio submenu. You can ignore most of the settings within here for now, we just need to set up where OBS will be capturing desktop audio, which is everything you hear outputted to your speakers or headphones. Um, and also your microphone audio too. Select desktop audio device, and from the drop down menu, select your primary audio device. Remember this isn't the output device you may always use, and you may need to select the device which you'll be using once you start recording, usually a pair of gaming headphones. Do the same for mic auxiliary audio device, and press apply. Now head to video. You want to change your base canvas resolution to your desired output resolution. This is usually the same as your monitor's res. If you want to scale this down to reduce the performance impact, which is especially useful when streaming, then it's recommended to do so within the output scaled resolution dropdown. Set these to be the same res if not. Within video, you can also change your desired FPS value. Default is 30, but you can set this to 60 if you prefer. Press apply and click OK. So let's leave these settings for now and explain what's going on in the main interface. The black rectangle is your canvas for any windows or games you choose to capture. Whichever image is within the border of this canvas will be outputted in your final video. At the bottom left, you've got your scenes menu. This allows you to swap between different video inputs and layouts. You'll want to make use of these if you plan on capturing multiple layouts and changing between them throughout your stream or recording. To the right of scenes is your sources menu. These are the actual input sources that you will be capturing, such as your display, a game, an image such as an overlay, or your beautiful face through a webcam. Further to the right of sources is your mixer. This will usually be made up of your desktop audio and your microphone audio. If you followed the steps earlier, you should be able to see any desktop audio coming through within the mixer's levels. Go ahead and test these now by playing some music and speaking into your microphone. If you see these levels spike into the yellow and red areas too often, then you can use the volume slider below to adjust the output. This is also useful for balancing your video or stream sound, so that the in-game sounds don't wash out all the sound coming from your microphone, or vice versa. You may be able to edit your audio tracks separately later, but that depends on the settings you choose later in the setup. Carrying on, we have scene transitions. We will come back to these later when we discuss studio mode, but essentially they allow you to control how transitions play out to keep your stream or video looking professional. Last, but by no means least, in that bottom row are the key controls. Start streaming and start recording pretty much do exactly what they say on the tin. Just make sure to keep an eye on them or else you may have a nasty surprise when you finish a gaming session. With these functions and controls in mind, let's go through a quick example of how to set up PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds before starting a recording or stream. Check your sources box is currently empty. If not, then select the remaining sources and click the minus symbol. Click the plus symbol and select your input type. For this example, we will select Game Capture. The Create Select Source menu will pop up. You can rename your source to be whatever you want to be most identifiable to you, but for this example, we will simply leave it as Game Capture. Press OK. The Properties window should now appear. The mode is how OBS will select the correct application. For the most part, games will be the only full screen apps you will likely have running, so you can leave this as Capture Any Full Screen Application if that suits you. Just bear in mind that you'll want to ensure any games are, in fact, actually running in full screen mode to be spotted by OBS. Otherwise, you can select Capture Specific Window. This allows you to pick any open window you have running, but you'll need to start the game and then Alt and Tab to return to OBS to select it. But this will ensure the game is definitely the window targeted for capture. Press OK. Your chosen source should now appear across the black canvas. You may need to resize this window to fit. To do so, you can either drag the red border as you like, or right click within the red border, hover over transform, select fit to screen. If you followed the basic setup earlier, you likely won't have to change a thing. But wait, you still aren't ready to record just yet. We need to ensure you have the best quality and encoding settings all ready to go before we go any further. This is a little more complex than the first few steps, but settings like this are what make OBS such a powerful tool. You can always layer sources within a single scene too. For example, you can add a webcam source, adjust the size so it fits in the top corner, and the final outputted video will show both. Whichever sources at the top of the list will be the highest in the stack, so make sure they are in the right order. Now you've got the basic setup mastered, there are a few more things you need to tweak to get the most out of your hardware. For now we're focusing on recording, but we'll come back to how to set up for streaming later on. Head into settings, and then into output. 
The first setting allows you to swap between simple and advanced modes. For now, we'll head to advanced as it offers some useful options to really fine tune your setup, but it's still pretty easy to navigate. So skipping streaming for now, look towards the recording section. The recording path is where you'll output the finished video file once you've finished capturing footage. If you're gaming on a hard drive, you may find that your video comes out laggy, choppy, and incredibly low quality. This is because it can often be too demanding to read and write both gaming and recording to the same drive. Change this to another drive to solve this issue. If this is set to an SSD, you should be all good to go. So recording format is where things get a little more interesting. Here are the most popular recording format options and their benefits and weaknesses. If audio isn't an issue for you or you're only recording one source, then stick with FLV. Otherwise, MKV may be the best option for you. Just be wary of the extra remix step required. You'll need to take the audio tracks that you require within the settings here. Encoder is one of the most important steps. What is available to you on this drop-down list will all depend whether you are using NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel hardware. If you've got NVIDIA equipment, then you want to go with the NVENC encoder. And if you've got AMD, you want to go with the AMD Advanced Media Framework. Once you've selected your encoder, new settings will magically appear. Within here, you need to change the rate control settings. Let's change these to CRF or CQP. Without going into too much detail, 23 is the default, and the higher this number goes up to 51, the worse the video quality will be. The lower the setting, zero being lossless, the better your video will look. You may want to check out the Replay Buffer tab too. This will allow you to capture a predetermined length of time by pressing a hotkey. This is useful if you don't also want to capture the entire gameplay session, but only want to see the highlights. You need to set the length of time you wish to keep within the Replay Buffer settings. This is measured in seconds, and you mustn't forget to assign a hotkey within the hotkey settings to save your capture. That's pretty much it for recording. Mess around with your settings to get the best output and find what's best for you and your hardware. Make sure to check back into your output folder regularly when you change settings to make sure everything is still going smoothly. So let's get into the streaming side of things. For recording, we wanted to ensure the highest quality possible, but for streaming, it's a bit more of a balancing act. Yeah, of course, having a high quality stream is really important, but you also need to be able to get a consistent bitrate as well. Having a consistent bitrate means that your viewers will see consistent video quality and won't suffer from any undue lag. Sometimes it's best to drop your resolution so that your viewers won't suffer from poor connection. Also, having a wired connection is preferable to a wireless one. Before you do anything, if you want to record your stream at the same time, then head to Settings, then General, and click the Automatically Record When Streaming box. You also might want to utilize the Profiles tab within the main interface. By creating a profile for streaming and one for recording, you won't have to keep changing all your settings every time you want to change them over. For Twitch streaming, the platform outlines their preferred settings for most common resolutions, so make sure to check these out. Here they are briefly. In OBS, you need to head over to Settings and then Output. Within the Advanced Settings, click to the Streaming tab and look for the Bitrate options. We are going to leave this on CBR, which stands for Constant Bitrate. Twitch used to limit bitrate to 3,500 kilobytes per second, but they've since ditched that limit. Still, it's worth testing at this quality, or preferably even less, and see how well your connection and hardware keep up. Also, make sure to change your resolution and FPS within the video options while testing. Try out utilizing your CPU first. So initially, you want to set your encoder to x264. Offloading all this encoding work onto your CPU can sometimes lead to better results. But if this doesn't work as well, or your CPU isn't quite up to spec, you can always have your graphics card do all the heavy lifting by changing your encoder to the same one as you set for recording. Set your keyframe interval to the Twitch setting outlined previously. For the most part, this is set to two seconds. Otherwise, check the recommended settings for your preferred streaming platform. For the most part, the very fast CPU usage setting will be the best balance for most use cases. However, you can tweak this if desired. This is where the benefits of a CPU can show over a GPU. However, it all depends on how well your CPU can handle potentially slower usage presets. These will improve image quality as you drop down to the slowest setting, but can be very demanding. Set your AVC H.264 profile and level to the recommended settings of your preferred platform. Audio is set to default and will likely be high enough for solid audio quality while streaming, but you can always change it here if need be. Click Apply. Before you click Start Stream, however, you will need to make sure you connect OBS to your Twitch account and set up a broadcast. Otherwise, you'll just be shouting into the dark depths of the internet with no one around to hear you. To do this, you will need to get hold of your Steam key from Twitch, or whichever platform you prefer. Instructions may vary. For Twitch, however, you can find this within the dashboard of their site. Copy this key from Twitch and then head over to Settings and Stream. For the most part, leave the default settings and copy your key into the Stream Key box. Click Apply. 
you can always change your preferred service from the service dropdown and also the server. You can check which server is best for you using various web tools, and this will likely be the one geographically closest to you. For now, let's leave it on auto and click apply again. That's it, not so bad, right? Now you have the basics of streaming covered. You are ready to hit start streaming. Just remember to turn that stream off when you're done, okay? So here's a few tips and tools that are either right there in OBS or a few clicks away to help you get started. We promised we'd return to studio mode eventually. This is a useful tool that, once activated, allows you to prepare a secondary scene that will not be shown on stream. Once you've selected the right scene and edited whatever you needed to edit, you can press transition. This will swap the left-hand preview capture with the right-hand live capture, and your stream will look smart and consistent. Another useful feature is stream delay. This allows you to prevent any unfortunate mishaps or sensitive data from reaching your live stream immediately. Instead, this will be delayed and stored locally until the predetermined time is up. To activate, head into Settings, then Advanced, tick the Enable checkbox under Stream Delay, set your delay duration and take note of the memory usage, click Apply and OK. NewTek NDI is a useful standard for users who prefer to set up an independent streaming rig separate from their main gaming machine without the use of a capture card. This free standard allows for video inputs and outputs to be transferred across a network and thankfully makes this very setup very easy to implement on OBS. You can download an OBS NDI plugin straight from OBS Project. That will allow you to set this up across the devices with little to no hassle. Streamlabs is a popular set of tools and widgets useful for streaming. Their widgets are really easy to implement into your stream straight through OBS. You'll first need a Streamlabs account to get started. From there, though, you'll only need to carry out a few simple steps to get them into OBS itself. Grab the widget URL from the Streamlabs widget page once you've set up how you'd like it to look through your account. Now head over to OBS, right click within Sources and hover over Add, or click the plus symbol within the box. From here, navigate to and select Browser Source. Within the Create Select Source window, you can change your source name to reflect the widget being installed. For example, change this to Alerts. Press OK. Within the Properties window, select URL Delete any URL currently within the box and paste in your widget URL. You could edit how this widget looks within this page, but you can also move it around by selecting it from the main interface too. Press OK. If you want your widgets a little more baked into the app, you can also try out Steam Labs OBS, or SLOBS as it's affectionately known. This builds upon the solid framework laid out within OBS Studio, but Stream Labs have also added their own streaming widgets and integrations within the app itself. So far the app is only in beta, but since it's built upon open source software, it's free to download over at their site. Finally, outside of OBS, you can always get more information on Twitch channels, growth, emotes, followers, stats, and whatever else you might need to grow your channel and plan your rise to stardom over at our sister site, twitchtools.com. Well, that just about wraps up everything you need to know about OBS and kickstart your career in streaming. We hope you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and check back on PCGamesN.com for more hardware and gaming news, reviews, giveaways, and whatever else you can think of. Cool, thanks for watching. Thanks.